Hi everyone, what's up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So in today's video, y'all, I think this is the part two. I might have like uploaded more videos about this topic, but it's basically things Germans do that just make more sense. If I have made more than two uploads, I will link them up above in the eye or down below in the description box if you want to check them out. But I'm going to be talking about five things that I just think make so much sense here in Germany. You guys can let me know if you are German or if you are from anywhere else in the world, if you do these things, if you don't do these things, or if you think these things are good, ridiculous, let's just have a conversation down below in the comment section. And keeping this intro short, simple, and sweet, don't forget to subscribe, you guys. You might as well, because a lot of y'all are not subscribed. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it helps me tremendously and it helps this video be seen by other people. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And so, Whew, with all that being said, let's get right into the video. The first two points are going to be very child children heavy. And I talk about children a lot on my channel. I don't have any children, so I can't talk about like my personal experience of being a parent. But when I first came to Germany, I was an au pair. I was a nanny. I worked in kindergartens. I volunteered in kindergartens. And so a lot of the cultural, like the introduction to the culture and all of the culture shocks that I saw in the first couple of years of me being here usually came from children and so that's why I talk about this a lot on my channel and so with that being said the one of the most interesting things in my opinion that German parents do is allow their kids to use this I'm trying to think of the name I don't know the name I call it a balance bike or a scoot scoot it is this little short bike that has two wheels with no pedals that a child has to basically balance their weight on and they can ride it like a normal like bicycle just with no pedals. The first time I was introduced to this, I was an au pair and the people I worked for, they asked if I wanted to go on a bike ride with their kids. And I was like, yeah, sure. But one of the kids was a little bit too small for like a bike, like a tricycle, what we have in the United States that you get when you're younger. They come out with this little bike thing, this scoot scoot, and they put it down. The kid gets on it, puts on his helmet and is off. Like literally, zoomies, a Vic. In my opinion, it gives kids independence. It stimulates the child's mind. It teaches kids um, road rules and laws. It's exercise. There's just a lot of benefits that go in to using one of these little scoot scoots. <laughs> y'all, I don't know the name at all. I'm, I'm literally on here talking about a scoot scoot. And if y'all don't start calling it a scoot scoot from now on, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> This balance, it's not a balance bike either. I don't even know what the heck this name is. But yeah, um, it also teaches kids that a bicycle is a viable form of transportation here in Germany. I do think it's though one of the cutest things to see one of these kids, usually in winter, like a little tiny German child, wrapped up in their winter clothing, like a little fat bubble on this tiny miniature bike going down like a decline on a hill really fast, like a little Formula One driver whizzing away <laughs> and I'm like wow and then hitting their brakes or stopping themselves just in enough time to not hit the main road. Going on to the next point this is something that I find to be very good very smart maybe a little bit harder to implement in the United States because of our um, parental leave laws uh, not even lack thereof but in Germany there's this thing called I think it's pronounced Eingewohnung, and I haven't had to use this word, say this word in years, so I could 1000% be incorrect, but it is the um, acclimation of a kid or getting your kid acclimated into daycare. I would say the average time at my kindergarten was around 10 days max. It just depends honestly on the parents, on the children, on the daycare, and a lot of other different factors. So let's say it opens at 8 a.m. you would go from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the first day get to know the other children get to know the people that are working there get to know maybe the morning hour the breakfast hour eat food with the other children introduce yourself the kid introduces himself he gets to know his own cubby where he's going to be putting his stuff at he takes off his shoes puts his little jacket up those types of things and then it's the same um, like process the next couple of days it's just the time gets longer until usually the 10th to 14th day, the parent says, okay, I'm leaving, pick you up at 4 p.m., 
3 p.m., 6 p.m., don't know your work schedule. Some people in the United States do this. I know a few people, they do this, but they only did it for like three days in the beginning. But a lot of times people don't have that time. They don't have that luxury. They don't have that privilege in the United States. So a lot of kids, they just get thrown into daycare they cry, it's traumatic, and it's not really a nice experience. And so I think the purpose of this in Germany is to A, not have such a huge emotional detachment process, but also like building trust in a child, um, in the parent, in the kindergarten workers, and the other kindergarten children. It's just creating a nice environment and relationship between everyone. And I personally think it's an amazing idea. Maybe one day I'm just going to open a kindergarten in the United States and it's going to be called the German American Kindergarten. I'm not German, um, but I'm American and I'm bringing over the German uh, way of life to the United States and I'm going to charge a premium because capitalism. <laughs> I'm just kidding you guys. Y'all are going to hate me. So the next point is going to be that cashiers can sit while they're working. I remember my first visit to a German grocery store and walking to the cash register and seeing all of the cashiers just sitting down scanning stuff. And it was like, I don't want to say weird for me because it wasn't, but it like made me think, why are they sitting down? <laughs> what are they doing? And I don't know if it's because we have this bias or this like internal idea or thought that we have in the United States that if you are sitting and if you're not standing or if you're not constantly moving, you're not working or if you're not constantly doing something, then you're lazy. It took me a while to get this like association and this these thoughts out of my head to realize that this is so much nicer. It's just uh, you don't want to stand, especially people that are cashiers, they are constantly standing, moving, bending over, picking up stuff. A lot of times people that are working at cash registers, they're also doing other jobs like stocking or inventory of some sort. And so it's nice to be able to sit down when you really have no need to stand. Let people be comfortable. There is no need to make things uncomfortable for people unless ap absolutely necessary, unless it's German bureaucracy and they just wanna make everything uncomfortable because then it's absolutely not necessary for them to make it uncomfortable. The next thing that Germans do that just make more sense is probably one of my favorite pieces of German culture. I don't know if it's German culture, it's probably European culture, but I just find this idea to be very cute and it's something that I noticed in when I first got here and it is a little rent-a-garden. <laughs> like, I, I I think it's called a Schrebergarten. I think it could be called a Kleingarten, a Familiengarten, a Heimgarten. There are so many different words for what this is, but it's like this piece of land, usually, that is maybe given or purchased by a club or association in Germany. And then that club or association takes little plots of land and leases it to their members. And so then those members can do generally whatever they want or can like plant and grow whatever they want there um, for a minimal out of pocket price. These little gardens are sprinkled all over the country, but I really like them in the city for a few reasons. Uh, it offers a green space where there maybe isn't usually a green space. It allows a social environment for people that maybe feel isolated. It allows a lot of times elderly people to find a community of people that have similar interests as them. It allows you to grow your own fruits and vegetables at a minimal price. It allows kids and other types of even people that have disabilities. It allows them to learn um, certain, how do you say, responsibilities or skills that you maybe would not learn if you did not have um, the space available. It promotes and preserves certain species of plants and insects to thrive and have a place to live because there are certain maybe let's say plants or insects that are not really endangered but on the verge of being endangered and they need space because their habitats are being chopped down. So these types of gardens allow them to have this space and there are a lot of other benefits as well. I maybe link like list some on the screen so you guys can see everything that I've thought about. Um, if I've missed some, you guys can let me know. So the last and final point is going to be something that y'all actually introduced me to or reminded me about because I knew about it, but I totally forgot about it until y'all brought it up in my comment section. And it is in German, big words for a small brain, Unterlassene Hilfeleistung in die Behinderung von Hilfeleistenden Personen. 
which means the requirement by law to help someone in need, um, like an emergency slash or uh, preventing people from getting the help they need. So ambulance, police officer, fire truck, whatever else you can add to that list, preventing those people from helping someone in need. And I think this is an amazing idea. In the United States, we have the move over law, which I think is umbrellas and how do you say touches all 50 states in the United States, which basically means if you can and you see, let's say an emergency vehicle on the side of the road, you see one coming up behind you, they have their lights on. This can include sanitation vehicles, uh, construction vehicles, I believe also are thrown in there. You have to move. And I think that if you don't move, you can get like a non traffic, I don't know, a traffic violation, something, and you maybe get charged up to like a hundred or 200 bucks. But when it comes to laws that are as focused as these German laws are, um, it's sort of a gray area in the United States because also regarding lawyers, you get a really good lawyer, you do something stupid, a lot of times you can wipe your hands free. So when it comes to maybe preventing police officers and ambulances from doing their job, you can get arrested. But like I said, if you have a good lawyer and you have money, eight times out of 10, you're not gonna get in that much trouble where you're gonna go to jail for a year of your life or have to pay a huge fine. But in Germany, the thing is, if you do one of these things, like if you don't help someone that needs help, or if you're preventing someone from getting help, I think it's like up to one year in like jail and also a big little fine. I think even in Germany, they could get rid of these laws and people would still do, I could be wrong, and people would still do these things just because of the culture and how the society works. Just be careful if you're in Germany and you wanna watch and record because that's also not allowed. In the United States, that's allowed. Here in Germany, you get in a lot of trouble. And so if you have skills, if you are able to help someone in need, you should definitely do it. Don't be a hindrance, don't be a burden, and also don't put yourself in more danger to hurt someone else. If you hear someone screaming in a house on fire, don't go run in the house that's on fire trying to save them, but call an ambulance, um, check the surrounding areas to make sure all of the other homes, everyone's getting out, check to see if like the neighbors are okay. I don't know, look to see if you can move something so it doesn't catch on fire. I, that's just what I would recommend. And there's probably a firefighter listening like, girl, don't, <laughs> Don't do any of those things. Granted, maybe police, ambulance, and fire f ambulances. I, what do you call the people that are in the ambulance? An ambulance? An ambulance? An ambulance or um, firefighters, they have more skills than you do. But at the end of the day, you should never underestimate yourself as like a human with basic instincts when it comes to helping someone. Nine times, mm. so 6.8 times out of 10 you will know what to do if you have common sense. And so, yeah, with all that being said, those were the points. Those are the things that I think Germans do that make so much more sense. You guys can let me know um, what things make sense to you. Like I said, I will link more videos up above in the eye and down below in the description box if you wanna watch them. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I love y'all, have a wonderful day, and bye.